guys. Oh, mm -hmm. boy. Uh, once more unto the breach, we throw ourselves in the service of our listeners, yes. our patrons, and the world at large. <laughs> the, the breach or the britches? The <laughs> britches. One of the two. Right in the breach. Hey, how was your week? Can I tell you about britches? What, what you got? <laughs> I tell you something that happened this week because I just thought it really it, it encapsulates me completely, this, <laughs> this incident. So I was in a big meeting, <laughs> big boardroom. And I'm supposed to give a big presentation, big video presentation, PowerPoint thing. And I sit back in my chair as everybody's kind of getting settled and cross my legs. <laughs> and I drop my hand in my lap. And I somehow hit myself in the balls so hard, <laughs> I couldn't breathe for like a full minute. <laughs> how, does, how does that happen? I just like six inches of movement in my hand. And I oh. nearly fainted. I nearly threw up. That Ladies my and week. gentlemen, your audio uncles are not the smartest. <laughs> nope. It's just, we can't guarantee that, but nope. But we love you. And, and now my, my enemies out in radio land know that my Achilles heel is my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Which was not hard to actually determine. But That's what unusual. Didn't, what they didn't know is that they don't have to do anything. You'll hit yourself there yep. eventually. I got it. You, I got gotcha. you. You've met the enemy and it, it, it is you. <laughs> That's fully me. So we started a few okay. minutes late on that particular presentation. But anyway, <laughs> fellas, that aside, here we are. Epi episode 123, 123. It's easy as ABC. That's right. I think. Yeah. Uh, easy as Do, Re, Mi, which I am going to talk about, actually, right. when we get to my uh, little subject, which is, <laughs> it's a woo, uh, and it's just literally this. Yes, it is an audio format woo. So everybody, get get get. You're gonna get healed. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm gonna talk about some mysterious moist Mormon mayhem <laughs> with the <laughs> baptisms for the dead. Thanks for saying moist in there. That's you're good. welcome. Yeah, and I am going to help you kick your troublesome Christian aunt right in the baby maker <laughs> with some <laughs> some Nazi facts. So get ready. Good at that. Hit yourself Get ready in the crotch in the process. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for some Nazi facts. Uh, here we come. It's uh, this this week brought to you by Manischewitz uh, for all of your kosher meal needs. Manischewitz, and I did not see that coming. Oh. I did not see that coming. So, all right, let's do it. Boom. Uncle Doug, Uncle Mark. You know, it's uh, everybody's got a silverware drawer. Yup, I think, and and you know, you keep all sort of things in there, all kind of things. Yeah, there's and, that drawer, uh, there's that junk drawer. That's not even a silverware drawer. It's just like where all your buttons are. <laughs> That's true. I you do, don't, I, keep, don't keep your buttons. I keep them in a in a in a mason jar, like oh, like wow. red blooded Americans. You piece How of shit. How fancy communist. you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan, what do you what do you have in your silverware drawer? <laughs> well. <laughs> I have, uh, I, I keep all my woo in my silverware drawer. Oh. So, you know, ah, got, smart thinking. I've, I've, I've got my, uh, my jade egg in there <laughs> yeah. and uh, various and sundry is that, things. Is that what you call your vagina? Your silverware drawer? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the old, so throw your flatware on in there. <laughs> yeah. Let's... Let's make something happen. <laughs> no, uh, I, I've, I, I was doing some, uh, some research this week on something new for the silverware drawer. Yeah. And Jesus fucking Christ, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. That was his Hebrew middle name, by the way. I think yes, people it, think it, we're being yeah. flippant, but we're not. We're being right. Bible in, in accurate. The, people think that his middle name started with an H, but it's actually, if you go to the original Hebrew... Well, it, fucking yeah. in Hebrew starts with an H. That's right. Yeah, yeah yes, exactly. Yes. And you have to read it from right to left. Mm -hmm. Anyway, here's the thing. You find a bit of woo, mm. you know, a bit of crazy out there in the world, and you think to yourself, that's interesting. I'm going to go research that. So you jump onto the, uh, that old information superhighway, and you start poking around... And at first, it's easy. You find a bunch of silly websites proclaiming in badly worded prose the virtues and benefits of this particular woo. Mm -hmm. But as you poke around, you see a word that you don't understand in this context or a phrase that they seem to think you will obviously know, but that makes no sense to you. So 
You jump to another tab and you look up that real quick. But that just leads to a whole other kettle of nonsense with ten other tendrils of phrases that seem to mean something entirely different from what you know, you, well, from what you know them to mean. Mm-hmm. So down you go, yep. sliding haplessly down a series of topics like a lubed-up water park enthusiast <laughs> until you've entirely lost the plot of what you were originally researching altogether. Yeah. Here's what I know for sure. One reason it is so fucking hard to talk to woo believers about their woo is that they have built walls, high and fortified, of nonsense language. Woo walls. So thick and impenetrable. That's right. They're woo walls. Yeah. And they are so impenetrable that there is simply no way to get through it. Oh, sure, you could carefully and persistently hack away at one small segment of their thicket, pointing out how each of their premises is based on other premises, which are based on other premises, none of which have an origin point grounded in anything more than somebody said so. But by the time you've cleared enough brush to try to show them that there's no root, they will have refilled everything you cleared out with more brush. Yeah. It's never ending. So, uh... You know, it, it goes into one of these things where it's like, you, but you were just talking about light, which is an electromagnetic wave. And now you're talking about sound, which is a percussive wave. They're totally different. <laughs> and they say, so you admit that everything in the universe is all waves. And you're like, they're not even related. Light can travel through space, but sound has to be perpetuated through a medium. Perpetuated through a medium? That's far out, man. <laughs> I'm going to have to start using that. And boom, that person's blog goes viral with a new theory about how we're all connected to the universe through because something, something perpetuated through a medium, which is understood to apply now to acupuncture and crystals and dream catchers equally. Oh, and because a psychic can be called a medium, that word is now, and and that word is in the new phrase, even though it's an entirely different usage of that word, it applies double to that. Right. It all comes together. It yeah. all comes together. And measles outbreak. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And the really infuriating thing is that nobody, including the great gurus of Wu, is expected to actually understand what any of it means. Right, they're just yeah. asking questions, man. As long as you know enough of the language, you can sufficiently obfuscate the topic such that even you are fooled by your own unintelligible ramblings. <laughs> And with that, uh, with all of that said, I give you tuning forks. No. Uh, <laughs> yes, tuning. Mm. Wait, tuning forks. Yes, <laughs> tuning forks. Those little metal doodads that have a rod that you hold, which forks into two parallel rods, and then when you strike it, it plays a specific note. Huh. They are apparently, depending on who you ask, going to cure everything oh, no. someday. Okay. <laughs> So this everything. Whole, yeah, like literally everything. Once you find the exact right perfect note, it'll just, it'll, it's magic and it'll cure all the The, heal, the sure. healing note? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the other, the other note will make you poop, but this one will just make you <laughs> yeah. heal. The other note I've, is called I've, dis- I've discovered right. that note quite by yes. accident. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was an embarrassing day on the escalator. We will be playing it later on in the show. We'll see. We'll, 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 the world over, people will uh, will find what the brown note does. Uh, anyway, so this whole journey started with a friend of mine posting a fun little video on Facebook. It was a demonstration of the physics of sympathetic resonance. Now, I took physics in college, and I loved it. So this was right up my alley. Uh, just briefly, sympathetic resonance is a thing that happens when one thing that resonates at a certain frequency, like the string of a guitar or violin, for example, Mm -hmm. becomes excited when another thing that operates at the same frequency is played. And we're already in trouble because I use the word frequency, which Mm -hmm. is the free space on the woo word bingo card. Mm -hmm. (laughs) To the wooers out there, frequency means everything and nothing. So just quickly, here I am referring to how fast something vibrates. Uh, In sound, the faster a thing vibrates, i.e. the higher the frequency the higher the pitch of the note that it produces. Mm -hmm. So 440 cycles per second produces the note A, double that to 880, and you get A but one octave up. All right. Uh, That's the basics of tone production in sound. What we're talking about now only applies to sound. 
None of this shit necessarily applies to any other kind of wave, even though those waves could be said to have a frequency as well. So we have to get that all very, very clear. Right. So back to sympathetic resonance. This is how a singer can break a crystal glass with their voice, for example. Uh, If they sing the exact note that that glass naturally vibrates at, a.k.a. the note that you would hear if you tapped the glass with a knife, and they sing it loud enough, meaning with enough amplitude, that th- then the glass will begin resonating with their voice. Uh, the resonance makes it start vibrating at that frequency, and if it vibrates too much, the glass structure cannot withstand it, and it, br- it breaks. Mm. Okay. Does that all make sense? Yeah, sure. Okay. I don't, know, I don't know how well I'm explaining any of this. I am not a science educator. That is not, <laughs> my, that is not my thing. And I just realized I'm down my own rabbit hole right now. So I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I promise I'll loop it back. Um, in the YouTube video I watched, the guy had a setup where one tuning fork is mounted on a block of wood at a, on a table and a ping pong ball is dangled from a string above it and set so that it is just barely touching that tuning fork. Mm-hmm. Then another tuning fork, which is tuned to the same note as the first one, is struck next to it, uh, but they don't touch, and the ping pong ball starts going crazy, bouncing higher and higher off the seemingly inert fork. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. One tuning fork is struck. The sound makes the other tuning fork vibrate, which bounces the ball. Physics! Right. Of sound! Yeah. Well... Sound waves. On that Facebook thread, thread, I happened to see that somebody had posted a picture of some tuning forks and a very long comment starting with the following. Quote... I benefit greatly from using the earth one, which is on the right. It cuts through the sound of electricity for me, and earth brings energy to organs. So therefore, I use it on certain meridians and acupuncture points to help assist in moving stagnant energy. Please tell me that this person is in no way responsible for my safety. (laughs) I guarantee you they are, in some way. I don't know who this person is. I don't, uh, you know, this is a friend of a friend sort Uh of thing. But there you have it. In just the first two sentences of this steaming pile of woo, one of our listeners just got bingo. (laughs) Or all of them did. Because (laughs) guess what? Energy is the free square in the woo bingo card. Wait, (laughs) did I say it was frequency before? Well, it is. (laughs) Because when every word means whatever you want, all the squares are free. Everybody gets a bingo. It's bingo for you, and you get a bingo, and you get a bingo. <laughs> Look, the comment that, went on that, to... Ex- that, by the way, was the poo note. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> yeah. The comment went on to explain that the green tuning fork in their collection was Earth, and the gold one was Ohm. For example, <laughs> so... They, here's, I'm going to continue with their quote. Quote, for example... Using Earth on kidney one while connecting <laughs> Ohm to my heart. Our organs speak to each other, but we have miscommunications going on, obviously. So supporting organs helps support energy movement within the body to move by learning to communicate again. Okay. Well, <sighs> obviously, right? Yeah. Uh, no word as to how playing a single tone and touching that... Presumably to the outside of your body, you know, because you can't actually touch stuff to your heart. Helps your organs, quote, communicate. Well, you can just once. Right, yes. <laughs> you, can, yeah. you can do it. You can ramp something it's, into your chest. It's really not a, one time. It's not a great it's, idea. It's going to be but in I your mean, obituary it, for sure. If you're yeah. going to do something with your heart, <laughs> do a tuning fork. Why not? Yeah. Just sharpen the one end of, of it. <laughs> um, but that's the great thing about Wu Talk. You just get to say it. You, you, don't, you never have to explain or justify it. So I went to the web for a better understanding of the claims that people make about how tuning forks can affect health. The slip And the slip and slide began. It started with different kinds of tuning forks, reviews of different sets of forks that you could get. Some were a standard octave. Some were a chakra set of seven forks tuned, you know, for your chakras. <laughs> right. Then there was the 11-fork set, tuned, I shit you not, to the tune of the eight planets, as well as Pluto, the sun, and the moon. How uh, do they know what note Pluto makes? (laughs) Well, you try finding an explanation of that, because I sure as fuck couldn't. (laughs) Then there were the solfeggio-tuned forks. Wait, I thought to myself, I know the word solfeggio. 
That's the way of learning musical intervals by applying syllables to each note, like do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Mm. You remember that from mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the musical <clears throat> there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know how that applies here. <laughs> well, somebody apparently heard that someone in ancient Asia used solfege somewhere along the line, and if it's good enough for ancient Asia, even if you have no idea what it is, it must be better than chemo. <laughs> so, yeah, here's exactly. a quote from... You know, a website. <laughs> Quote, Solfeggio frequencies make up the six-tone scale believed to have been used in ancient sacred music. Oh, God. Great, right? Bingo. What, bingo. Bingo. Again, <laughs> what actually seems to be happening is that people will sell you a set of blank number of tuning forks and then justify that number just with whatever Wu talk happens to coincide with it. And, and can I just rain on the parade here <clears throat> a little bit? Sure. You know what happened to all the the practitioners of ancient spiritual music? They all lived forever because they, <laughs> they had died. Magic? They oh, fucking died. Oh shit! They're, They're all dead. They they died and they died badly. Except Probably. for the three Nephites who are using tuning forks to this day to su- <laughs> to survive forever to change tires in Fillmore. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, listen, the fact is that unless they're dealing in quarter tones, which I promise they're not, there are only 12 notes on a standard scale. So that's kind of the limit. So they just come up with a few that sound interesting in combination and they tell you why it's magical. The idea is that if you strike the fork, then you place it on the body at the site of an organ or at a chakra or at a meridian or, you know, wherever it hurts. Or and then, in, a, in a sphincter, your business, no judgment. Right. Do <laughs> yeah. it wherever you want. Yeah. It heals you, or it connects your organs, or it aids in the flow of your energy, or it assists stagnant chi. Hell, you don't even have to touch it to the body. Yeah, no, uh, these are all quotes. Everything that I'm doing here, I read somewhere. Hell, listen, you don't even have to touch it to your body. You just, just hearing the tone is just as effective. I'll let another super reputable website explain. You guys, okay, wait. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Like, crack your necks, put on your seatbelts. According, according to Dr. Website. That's right. <laughs> yes. And all of these websites do cite, like, reputable scientists mm-hmm. with a quote that doesn't really refer to what they're talking about. Uh-huh. Yes. And it's then, a problem, yes. And then they're like, ha ha, see, real physicists agree with me. And this is like, that's not what that guy said, though. Here we go. Brace yourselves. Resounding right to the last molecule of sound, as the sound filtrates through your ears on a subtly powerful level, creating a subtle vibration with your vagus nerve, which in turn is connected to each of your organs. All of your organs have cells which have trillions of (laughs) molecules, which have an infinity amount of atoms. Atoms are 99.9999% space. However, that space has vibration and energy present. So on a subtle energetic vibrational level, when you listen to sound, you are tapping into your quantum space blending with the universe quantum space. Oh, my God. This may not sit well with some scientists out there. (laughs) But we are speaking about the most subtle vibrational energy and our connection to our divine core. Okay. That's a random word generator. G- Gwyneth that's... Paltrow and Deepak Chopra just came together right now. They exactly. Got in a, they got in a head-on collision <laughs> on Beverly Boulevard in that moment right there. That is, the, yeah. The, the, the Hollywood Woo super collider just engaged. Yeah. I, yeah. I just summoned a demon, I'm pretty sure, Yeah, by speaking those words out loud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, look, the more I dug, the deeper into the nothing I fell. Yeah. At one point, I found myself having to look up phi, the mathematical irrational number that defines the so-called golden ratio. Uh-huh. Why was I looking up phi? <laughs> because some shitbird on a website was claiming that different ratios of tones related to the Fibonacci sequence and that something oh something eight notes in an octave and 13 notes in a full scale and something something eight divided by 13 is 0.61538, which approximates phi, which it doesn't. 
Phi is approximately 1.61803, and that's a million miles away from 0.6 in mathematics. Right. They're nothing. They're, it's, it's, right. What the fuck? Mathematics damn, is not damn, kind of a, a seat of the pants discipline, right? You don't get to approximate. Right. You don't get to, like, claim maths on your side and then be like, approximately. It's close. Dan, <laughs> you're worked up. I'm prescribing six minutes of C flat on your yeah. third eye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I need it. I'm putting it in my sphincter. <laughs> uh, look, the point is that it's impossible to tell you what tuning forks are meant to do in the woo world because there's no consensus and no backing to anybody's theories. You can just use them alone or you can add them to your acupuncture or your Reiki protocol. Just get some, make tones, and then apply liberally. Well, you know, it, Dan, when, when we talked, it's the same thing here, which is why Wu is just so fucking f- infuriating. It, when you, I think you talked about crystals many episodes back. I can't remember which one. Yeah. And th- just like these tuning forks, they're comparing them to medicine, right? Crystals are medicine. Yeah. So, you know, the, the idea you go into a crystal shop and just take whatever medicine you want Go, go to the tuning fork shop and take whatever medicine you like. Imagine telling someone to go to a pharmacy and she's like, you know what? One pill's as good as another. Just fucking <laughs> take them and you'll be great. Like, it's, it's fucking insane. Like, if these yeah. things actually have some efficacy, you don't tell people to put the, you know, the A sharp on their patella because you, you, you'd kill them. Oh, it's why, bullshit. Why, why would you need a tuning fork? Just sing A sharp at you. Right. right and right. I'm if, it, listen, listeners, all of you. I'm healing you now. I think that's if, Earth. Or if you've lived or more whatever. than a few days on this Earth, you have been vibrate. Every sound frequency probably imaginable has vibrated at you. Yeah. Right. Everyone so that you, you can got hear all the medicine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you get it all the time. You get it all the time. Oh my God! Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I'll leave us with uh, with what my commenter friend, uh, the commenter on my friend's post said uh, before they mysteriously erased their comments because I guess <laughs> it was too much magic for the world to know about. Right. <laughs> Quote: I have these on me all the time now, <laughs> even in my car. Oh a no! Great li- a great little tool to assist through whatever protocols we choose. I actually have brought plants back to life as well as using them. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, no, uh, plants back to life as well using them. The protocol is different, though, on everyone. Also, if anyone uses it, if anyone uses it, it's strongly suggested to always close and open with ohm. <laughs> Hope this helps someone. <laughs> well, it Jesus helps us. Christ! <laughs> oh my God! Uh. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just need to sit in a room with some some tones now. Boy, resurrecting yeah. plants has got to be the worst X Men <laughs> <X-Men> of all. <laughs> right. Resurrecting plants often with with notes. <laughs> yeah, with he can note. talk to corn. Uh, well, that is something else, Dan. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're welcome, everybody. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's, let's vibrate and, on out of here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> 